transforming, making change in the society, it's kind of like a wave. And usually the, the policy change or the mass mobilization is sort of where the wave crashes. But if you ever look at the ocean, there's all this sort of underneath swelling up of the water. And a lot of that is about uh, cultural change that precedes uh, the political change. And so a lot of folks who work in areas of culture are, are most uh, in the best place to shift our attitudes, our narratives, our associations with different things. And that we had done enough education, the, the spirit of the art in the streets was such and that uh, ordinary people who had never had any connection to any organization came and joined up and linked arms and helped shut it down. So it, it transformed from an organized resistance into a popular public uprising. I, I am partly of the opinion that there should never be a rectangular protest sign again. It's like, what are you protesting? What's the image? You know, a four-year-old should be able to get it. All right. I'm going to talk about sunflowers for a minute. Sunflowers are pretty amazing, and one of the reasons I think, uh, I think the use of sunflowers, it's been used by different movements in the past, but in Detroit during the U.S. Social Forum, I was invited to work with a local coalition of environmental justice groups in Detroit that are fighting a big toxic incinerator, and they were advocating to, to recycle a lot of the materials which would create jobs and stop the horrible uh, toxic pollution and greenhouse gas pollution. So we decided to do a, they decided to do a march, and so we did a brainstorm about how, and also how could we make it positive, because the neighborhood where the incinerator is, is is pretty beaten down, and they wanted some beautiful stuff. And they, a lot of community gardens in Detroit grow sunflowers, so chose that as a symbol. One of the things about sunflowers, you can read about it in the Farmer's Almanac, but they actually take heavy metals and certain toxins out of soil. So it was, became a, a great symbol. They also follow the sun, and they're kind of like the sun, the source of food. Uh, so Detroit was the first place where we started making a bunch of big sunflowers. And, and that's actually that the stretch canvas was an, is sort of a, a flower pot. We, we planted a giant sunflower inside each one of those, and we went to different communities and said, hey, what's the alternative to incineration in your community? So you can see on. On that side, there's the clean air lung, and that one's the toxic, dirty air lung. And those are kids from a local church who painted those. So when we marched through Detroit, you can actually see the incinerator in the background. The march was like a, a field of uh, sunflowers and became sort of a, one of the iconic images of the social forum. We made our own uh, incinerator with the words about what it represented. So uh, I live in the Bay Area, and people know the Bay Area for a lot of things, but most people don't know that we have uh, five uh, oil refineries there, and they're the biggest greenhouse. I think two or three of them are the amongst the top 10 greenhouse uh, gas polluters in the state. And in places like Richmond, our uh, local kids have double the asthma rates as the rest of the county. So, uh, and what was it three years ago? Uh, on August 6th, there was an ex the refinery in Richmond, California, blew up and spewed out toxic fumes, and 1,500 local residents went to the hospital for respiratory and other problems. So, on the one year anniversary, uh, 350 Bay Area and all the environmental justice groups, APEN, CBE, RPA, in Richmond did a mass march. And, uh, and at actually sort of independently at the suggestion of one of the youth from the uh, urban tilth uh, adopted the sunflower as a, a core symbol of that. And that's my pickup truck with all the sunflowers the day of the demonstration that Julie and I and some friends got. And this is actually the end of the demonstration. Uh, we marched on the refinery, 3,000 strong, and 200 people sat down at the, and uh, occupied the main entrance of the uh, Chevron oil refinery and something pretty amazing about 3,000 people marching on a refinery and we had what, we got like 1,500 sunflowers so every other person was carrying a giant live sunflower which was you know pretty powerful so that was what the march looked like.
That was our poster for the march. And then we also did a, a thing we've done a few times in the Bay Area where we did a street mural. This is direct, directly in front of the main entrance to Chevron and we took kids uh, washable tempera paints. Julie, Julie <laughs> led that with her daughters. Uh, and I, two, some of the reasons for tempera paint is so that if you have to negotiate with the cops, you can say, hey, it's washable children's paint. It'll come, come right off. And also, if your friends have nice shoes and clothes, you can say, <laughs> it's washable children's paint. It'll come right off because it's messy. But we just immediately when the march arrived there, people already had a plan of what the image was. They chalked it out, passed out like 50 or how many, a bunch of containers of paint. And people, you know, here's a yellow. Can you fill in over there? And people love doing that. And there's also this thing. I mean, it, it, it's very it's on your local police force and dynamics. We've done it a lot in San Francisco. But uh, once you get 25 people painting and kids painting and stuff like that, it just becomes sort of a normalized thing. So, so we did that, and that's actually uh, that banner is all Richmond residents who are about to march across the Sunflower into the refinery and get arrested in civil disobedience.